Hello, everyone. Welcome to MCQ discussion series with me, Sanjay Dekshad. So today we'll be talking about MCQs in pharmacology. Uh, the topic is quinolones and fluoroquinolones. So let us start with the MCQs. Typhoid is a febrile illness due to bacterial infection, which is fairly common in many low and middle income countries. The treatment of choice for salmonella typhi is streptomycin, ciprofloxacin, gentamicin, cephalexin. We just said earlier that today we'll be dealing with quinolones and fluoroquinolones. So you see that we just have a single drug that belongs to the group of quinolones and fluoroquinolones, which is B, ciprofloxacin. So let us see if B is an answer. So here it is. Ciprofloxacin is the answer. Let us look at the explanation. Ciprofloxacin 500 mg or 750 mg BD for 10 days is a preferred drug for the treatment of typhoid. P-floxacin and O-floxacin can also be used. Uh, ciprofloxacin is also effective in eliminating the chronic carrier state of salmonella typhi when the therapy is continued for six weeks. WHO currently recommends fluoroquinolone antibiotics in areas which, are, which have known resistance to older first-line antibiotics. This reference is this question is taken from Cochrane Library. You can go to the uh, to the reference if you wish to. Okay, so coming to the next question. Phototoxicity is an acute light induced response which occurs when photo photoreactive chemicals are activated by solar lights and transformed into products. Cyto cytotoxic against the skin cells. The maximum incidence of phototoxicity is associated with A. Sparfloxacin, B. Lomifloxacin, C. Cotrimoxazole, and D. Norfloxacin. Out here, there are three quinolones, right? Sparfloxacin, Lomifloxacin, and Norfloxacin. So it could be either of the three. Basically, phototoxicity is seen very much with sparfloxacin. So let us try sparfloxacin. Yes. Right. Let us look into the explanation. Sparfloxacin frequently is known to elicit photosensitive skin reactions. Photosensitivity or phototoxicity it is represented in 41% of reported reactions and 98% of skin reactions with sparfloxacin. The lesions were characterized by solar erythema, face and uncovered skin, uh, second degree burns or blisters occur in 23% of the cases. Okay, let us look at the next question. Okay, the quinolone antibiotics are primarily active against gram-negative bacteria with increasing and with increasing generations, their spectrum increases to include gram-positive atypical pathogens and anaerobes. They are known to target bacterial DNA gyrase and topoisomerase 4. Topoisomerase 4 is the primary target of which type of organisms? Atypical pathogens, gram negative, anaerobes, gram positive. So, which one do you think it is? This detail has been given in Goodman and Gilman book for pharmacology, right? So, it states that the gram positive bacteria. For gram positive bacteria, topoisomerase 4 is the primary target. For many gram positive bacteria, topoisomerase 4 is the primary target. For many gram negative bacteria, DNA gyrase is the primary quinolone target. And the quinolones, they inhibit the DNA gyrase, mediate, um, gyrase mediated DNA supercoiling at concentrations that correlate well with their effective antibacterial concentration actions. Okay, here's the next question. Neisseria gonorrhoeae is implicated in cervicitis, urethritis, and pelvic inflammatory disease. The treatment of penicillin is in producing Neisseria gonorrhoeae is done with ciprofloxacin, azithromycin, doxycycline, amoxicillin. Out here, ciprofloxacin is only the is the only fluoroquinolone given. Right? So, yes, the answer is ciprofloxacin. Let us look into the explanation. 
Uh, cervicitis, urethritis, and pelvic inflammatory disease due to Neisseria gonorrhea, they are known to respond to ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin. However, since the resistance is on the rise, ciprofloxacin is the ceftriaxone, the third generation cephalosporin is the drug of choice now. And quinolones are also to be avoided in pregnancy. Okay. The question is, which of the following fluoroquinolones can be used safely in renal failure? P-fluxacin, lomifloxacin, ofloxacin, or ciprofloxacin? With regards to fluoroquinolones, when we talked in the lecture, we said that the fluoroquinolones, they reach high concentration in urine as compared to the plasma. That is why the level of drug that reaches the, the kidney is relatively very, very high. So most of, that, is, that is the very reason why most of the flow of quinolones, they find themselves useful in treatment of UTIs. However, this can be a problem in the case of renal failure. So most of the drugs, they cannot be safely used during renal failure. However, the drug that is given out here, pfloxacin, is comparatively safe for using renal failure. Let us look into explanation. It says that no difference in distribution or elimination of pfloxacin is absorbed between patients with mild to severe renal impairment. This is also taken from another journal listed. Okay, the question says, fluoroquinolones should be avoided in patients, in elderly patients, like in patients with hypertension, in patients with genetic conditions like Marfan syndrome or else, Danlos syndrome. The reason for the drug to be avoided in such patients is due to increased risk of A, hepatic injury, B, arthralgia, C, phototoxicity, or D, aneurysm. Just earlier, we said that fluoroquinolones, they reach relatively higher concentration in the kidneys. That's why the risk to kidney damage is relatively higher. And the fluoroquinolones, that undergo hepatic metabolism are relatively few. So hepatic injury may not be the one. Arthralgia, yes. It may, it may be fluoroquinolones are known to cause arthralgia when they are given to a small age, age kids, right? That is why they are generally contraindicated in children below 12 years of age or somewhere it's, it's also said that it is contraindicated in people below 18 years of age. Phototoxicity, we said that sparfloxacin is known to cause phototoxicity, right? And D, aneurysm. Yes, it is D, aneurysm, in which, which says that fluoroquinolones have been identified to cause aneurysms and therefore should be avoided in subset of patient population like elderly patients, in patients with hypertension, and in patients with genetic conditions like Marfan syndrome or ehlers danlos syndrome. Okay, now let us move to the Next question. Acute bacterial prostatitis is acute bacterial prostatitis is usually caused by agents that cause UTI like E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella. This kind of prostate infection can be treated by which of the following fluoroquinolone antibiotics? A. Gatifloxacin, Trovafloxacin, Ofloxacin, Nalidixic acid. If you look into the options, all the options are from four different classes of, uh, four different generations of quinolones, right? So nalidixic acid being the first generation, ofloxacin being the second generation, gatifloxacin being the third generation, and trophofloxacin being the fourth generation. Here, we said that acute bacterial prostatitis is caused by agents that cause UTI, right? Like E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella. So we are talking about gram-negative infections. And yes, first generation, some of the first, like nalidixic acid can be useful against the first generation agent, right? However, the coverage is much better with the second generation agent. And nalidixic acid is only reserved for UTIs, right? So the answer out here is ofloxacin. The first generation drugs, though they are effective in UTIs, they are not effective for prostate infections. And the third generation and fourth generation agents, they provide increased streptococcal and anaerobic coverage, which is not needed to treat 
prostate infections. So all the second generation agents or any of the second generation agents, they can be used for the treatment of prostatic infection like ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, norfloxacin or levofloxacin. Although all of the second generation drugs are used to treat prostatitis, only ofloxacin has been approved by US FDA, a Food and Drug Administration in the USA for the treatment of prostatitis. Let us move to another question. The quinolone antibiotics were first discovered as antibacterial agents that are highly effective against A, atypical organisms, B, gram-positive organisms, C, anaerobic organisms, D, gram-negative organisms. Okay, we've, uh, in our lecture, we've said that the quinolones and fluoroquinolones, they have been divided into four generations, right? The first generation agents, they were active against gram-negative organisms. The second generation, the activity increases to cover gram-positive organisms. The third generation agents, they, are, they also cover the atypical organisms and the fourth generation agents cover anaerobic organisms. So, because we are talking about the first discover antibacterial agent from quinolone antibiotics, right? So, they are highly effective against gram-negative organisms. Okay, let us move to the next question. A third generation fluoroquinolone has been banned for use in the USA since 2006 for fatalities related with hyperglycemia in diabetic individuals and also paradoxical hypoglycemia in patients taking oral hypoglycemic drugs. Identify the drug. Spavfloxacin, levofloxacin, gatifloxacin, and moxifloxacin. For this question, there are no hints as such, right? You need to know this from your learning itself. So the drug out here is gatifloxacin. Gatifloxacin is a drug which is approved for the treatment of tuberculosis as well. Nevertheless, since 2006, it has been banned for use in the USA because it has led to fatalities. And there have been cases of hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia in diabetic individuals and also if the diabetic patients are taking oral hypoglycemic agents, then there have been cases of hypoglycemia. So that is why catifloxacin has been banned. It, is, it has been mentioned in Catechism Pharmacology since 12th edition. You can find it there. Okay, so which fluoroquinolone is highly active against Mycobacterium leprae and is being used as alternative multidrug therapy regimen. A, ofloxacin, B, norfloxacin, C, lomifloxacin, or D, ciprofloxacin. Here we are talking about Mycobacterium leprae or the Mycobacterium agent that is implicated in the causation of leprosy that is also known as Hansen's disease. Out here, Ofloxacin is the answer, right? Because ofloxacin is active against both Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Myco Mycobacterium leprae, and it is the one which is used as alternative multidrug therapy regimen in leprosy. Okay, which is the which is, which of the following is the primary choice anti pseudomonal antibiotic? Sinoxacin. Nalidixic acid, vancomycin, ciprofloxacin. Here, vancomycin is not a uh, fluoroquinolone, right? Sinoxacin and nalidixic acid belong to the first generation quinolones, and ciprofloxacin is the second generation quinolone. So the answer out here is ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin has got increased coverage against the pseudomonas. So second generation quinolones like ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, lomifloxacin, they are active against gram-negative organisms, including pseudomonas species. And the first generation quinolones, though they are effective against other gram-negative organisms, they are not very effective against pseudomonas. 
Vancomycin is not a primary choice for the treatment of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Nevertheless, vancomycin in combination with superfloxacin have exhibited synergistic activity against various strains of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, this question deals with pharmacokinetic interactions, right? So, ciprofloxacin should not be given to an asthmatic using theophylline because A. Ciprofloxacin decreases effect of theophylline. Theophylline inhibits ciprofloxacin metabolism. Theophylline induces metabolism of ciprofloxacin or ciprofloxacin inhibit theophylline metabolism. So, which one do you think it is? Theophylline is a relatively narrow spectrum antibiotic and ciprofloxacin has been known to inhibit the theophylline metabolism. So because there is inhibition of metabolism of um, ciprofloxacin inhibits metabolism of caffeine and theophylline and therefore it would be prudent to avoid the combination of ciprofloxacin with drugs which are metabolized and have no low therapeutic window like theophylline. Okay, so a 42-year-old male patient has intra-abdominal infections caused by anaerobic bacteria and you decide to prescribe him an oral drug from fluoroquinolone antibiotics group. Which drug would you prescribe him for the patient? Would you prescribe for the patient? A, ciprofloxacin, B, ofloxacin, C, trobafloxacin, or D, sparfloxacin. Here we said that the causative agent is anaerobic bacteria and it has caused intra-abdominal infections, right? So we need an antibiotic that can cover the anaerobic bacteria. We said earlier that the first generation are good for gram-negative, second generation for extended gram-negative plus positive, third generation for including atypical and fourth generation for anaerobic bacteria. So we need to spot the fourth generation agent out here, which is trovafloxacin. Tropafloxacin is the third generation fluoroquinolone antibiotic with activity against organisms, anaerobic organisms, and therefore are given in intra abdominal infections. Okay, let us move to the next question. Sparfloxacin and estimizole, both of the drugs can cause nephropathy, ventricular arrhythmia, electrolyte imbalance, or myopathy. So which one do you think it is? Think about it. Well, you may not, you may not know about sparfloxacin typically, right? But then most of you might already know that estimizole is known to cause ventricular arrhythmia, right? So we are talking about a drug. We are talking about the effect that both of the drugs cause. So the answer is ventricular arrhythmia out here. Sparfloxacin can cause QT prolongation and torsion three points. Estomizole is the anti histamic drug that was banned for the same reason causing, of causing cardiac arrhythmias. Okay, let's move on to another question. Which of the following fluoroquinolones does not need dose adjustment in patients with creatinine clearance of 50, less than 50 mg per minute? Sparfloxacin, tropafloxacin, ciprofloxacin, lomifloxacin. In case of fluoroquinolones, because they reach higher concentration in urine, that is why they are mostly useful in UTIs, right? But then there are some kind of fluoroquinolones which also undergo extensive metabolism in the liver. Therefore, and we need to spot that very kind of antibiotic. The antibiotic is trovafloxacin. Right? While most fluoroquinolones are concentrated in the kidneys, making them helpful in UTIs, some newer fluoroquinolones like moxifloxacin and trovafloxacin are metabolized in the liver first, and hence unmetabolized drugs are not concentrated in the kidneys. So such drugs do not need no dose modification for kidney impairment, rather they would require dose modification in case of liver impairment only. Okay, let's move on to the next question. 
The question says, the first quinolone antibiotics to be discovered in 1962 by George Lesser and his team is gatifloxacin, ciprofloxacin, sinoxacin, nalidexic acid. Out here, we see that gatifloxacin is the third generation agent. We said that it was, it was banned in USA in 2006, right? What were the reasons for causing fatalities related to hyperglycemia in diabetic patients and also hyperglycemia in those who were being given oral hypoglycemic drugs, right? Okay, ciprofloxacin is the second generation agent, so it was not the first to be discovered either. Sinoxacin and nalidexic acid are the two options, and we know that nalidexic acid is the first agent to be discovered. And also that the discovery of nalidexic acid is a kind of fortuitous discovery, quite like that of penicillin, in that the, the team of scientists were trying to synthesize the antimalarial drug chloroquine when they came across nalidexic acid, which inhibited the gram-negative agents. Okay, so the question says, a rare but serious adverse effect associated with fluoroquinolone antibiotics, which mandates cautionary use in patients above 60 years of age or those on concomitant use of corticosteroids is tendonitis, hypersensitivity, insomnia, arthropathy. Insomnia out here is clickbait, right? If people think that Think of patients about 60 years of age, they relate people, they relate that very age people with insomnia. So it's a clickbait, but nevertheless, it is not the answer. Arthropathy is seen basically in small age children. That's why this is banned in children less than 12 years of age. And also some books say that it is banned in children less than 18 years of age. Hypersensitivity could be seen in any age group. So the answer out here is tendonitis. Let us look into the explanation. Tendonitis, it is a relatively rare complication that has been reported in adults and potentially it is more serious because of the risk of tendon rupture. The risk factors for tendonitis includes advanced age, renal insufficiency and concurrent steroid use. Tendon disrupt, uh, disorders associated with fluoroquinolones have been estimated to occur at a rate of approximately 15 to 20 people per 100,000 patients. Fluoroquinolone associated tendonitis most commonly involves Achilles tendon, but nevertheless, other different tendons can also be affected. Okay, fluoroquinolones normally have longer half life as compared to the first generation quinolones. Fluoroquinolone having longest half life is spafloxacin, levofloxacin, lomifloxacin, and ciprofloxacin. Sorry, there are two typos in the same page. It should be compared and is found fluoxacin, right? So which one is it? The answer should be spa fluoxacin. In that spa fluoxacin has a half-life of approximately 20 hours, which is the longest among the fluoroquinolones. The fluoroquinolone antibiotics are known to inhibit topoisomerase 2 and 4 in the bacteria and thereby lead to their death. Similar in effect of inhibiting topoisomerase 2A in humans is seen with which of the following drugs? Chloroquine, amphotericin B, albendazole, doxorubicin. Out here, chloroquine is the antimalarial drug, right? Amphotericin B, the antifungal drug, albendazole, anti-helminthic drug, and doxorubicin is the anti-cancer drug. The answer is doxorubicin. Rubicin. We said that antibacterial drugs, they have got the action quite similar to anti-cancer drugs, right? In that both of, so both of them are called chemotherapy. Let us look into the explanation. Donorubicin, doxorubicin, etoposide, and methoxanthrone are anti-cancer agents that inhibit cancer cells by growth by inhibiting the topoisomerase 2A in humans. So it's doxorubicin. Okay, this, the question pertains to TB, right? The inability to use powerful antitubercular drugs is an in, in an increasing number of patients seems to be the biggest threat towards global tuberculosis elimination by 2033. WHO recommends use of the, all of the following fluoroquinolones in the TB of, in the treatment of TB as second line agents. Which one of the following is not recommended by WHO for the purpose? 
moxifloxacin, levofloxacin, catifloxacin, ofloxacin. So which one could it be? Think about it. Here the clickbait can be gatifloxacin in that we said that USA has banned the use of drug since 2006 for causing fatalities related to hypoglycemia and hypoglycemia, right? But nevertheless, WHO still recommends using gatifloxacin in the treatment of TB. So this is not the case. The drug out here is ofloxacin. Ofloxacin is not effective in the treatment of tuberculosis and the rest of the drugs, gatifloxacin, levofloxacin, and moxifloxacin, they are all WHO recommended drugs for treatment of tuberculosis. Gatifloxacin, ispafloxacin, and tropafloxacin have been discontinued for tribute treatment by USA and gatifloxacin was also banned in the USA in 2006 for severe side effects of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. Let us move to the next question now. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.